Retro illumination is a useful technique to look at structures which have low contrast on the cornea, such as corneal nerves and blood vessels. As the name suggests, this technique looks at structures illuminated from within the eye. The illumination actually comes from scatter, typically from the iris or fundus. So in this image, we can see the corneal section formed with a direct beam on the left and the retro beam is formed by the light that goes through the cornea and is diffusely reflected back. We will need to position the retro beam below the structures that we want to look at. So in the image, the beam that is on the right is the retro beam and we want to look at structures that are above the beam. We can magnify the image and get the patient to look straight ahead initially and then make the two beams form a V-like shape. We can then get the patient to look upwards and try to focus the slit lamp on the structures on the cornea above the beam on the right. We can now start seeing some corneal structures. As this diagram shows, in essence what we are doing is shining the illumination system through the cornea. The majority of the light passes through, but some of it forms the reflected corneal section that we can see here. The majority of the light that passes through strikes the iris and scatters off the iris before illuminating the cornea from behind, forming the blue patch as we see here. If there are any blood vessels or other structures in the cornea at that stage, they will be illuminated from behind and they will be visible in the light that we see as a retro beam. Now we've seen this diagrammatically, we can start to see some of the structures here on a real eye. To improve the visibility, we can decrease the height of the slit to reduce glare. Some blood vessels are now clearly visible above the patch on the right. Increasing the magnification further allows us to see some of those blood vessels in greater detail, as we can see here. When practicing this technique, it is a good idea to try and do this on a person with a green or blue coloured iris, as the blood vessels are rather more visible against the blue-green background and also the light that is created by the reflection off the green iris will in essence be red free, thereby increasing the contrast of the blood vessels we're trying to look at. Further magnification and increase in brightness will make the structures even more visible. When this is done, we can see the blood vessels in detail and how these limbal blood vessels are looping backwards rather than heading to the centre of the cornea. This is a very useful technique to detect neovascular growth. A key element of this technique is to cross-illuminate. So when we are looking at structures on the nasal cornea, we must make sure that the illumination system is on the temporal side, as it is here. If the illumination is on the same side, that is on the nasal side, the glare that is caused will reduce the visibility of those blood vessels. Here, as we move it back to the temporal side, the blood vessels are rather more visible. If we want to view temporal cornea, then all we have to do is move the illumination system to the nasal side so we are cross-illuminating, thereby making the corneal blood vessels more visible, as we can see here. 